Hi, everyone. Um, hope you are having a great day. This is Apoorv. Um, I'm working as a senior product manager at Microsoft Ireland. Uh, currently, I'm part of the modern workplace transformation team within Microsoft, and I'm working on a V1 offering um, of a product. Previously, I was working as a senior product manager at Amazon Web Services um, for AWS Lambda, which is a compute service. And prior to that, I was working as a principal product manager at Informatica, which is market leader in cloud enterprise data management. Um, I also worked as a product manager, a solutions architect, and a development lead at SAP um, across uh, multiple locations. And in terms of my academic qualifications, I hold a bachelor's degree in technology uh, from Indian Institute of Information Technology, which is Center of Excellence of IT in India and postgraduate diploma in product management from the Graduate Business School of Technological uh, University, Dublin. And uh, the topic for today's presentation is data-driven product management. Um, it's a short presentation. Uh, and here is the agenda of my talk today. Uh, first and foremost, we are going to talk about why is it important to be a data-driven product manager, especially in today's era of digital transformation. Uh, the second thing that I'm going to talk about is how can you become a data-driven product manager? And this is for folks who are new into product management discipline and who want to understand the tools and techniques that they can deploy in order to be a data-driven product manager. And uh, as a part of that, I'll be also touching upon some of the frameworks, tools, and techniques that you can do uh, on a daily basis to make more informed product decisions and business decisions. So let's start. So we'll start with the most important question, which is why is it important to be a data-driven product manager in today's era? So as we know, data is the epicenter of all the businesses today. Every company, irrespective of the industry and the business model that they are in, they are trying to be data-driven and data, as they say, is the new oil. So the first and the foremost reason why uh, it's important to be a data-driven product manager is the digital transformation, which most of the businesses are doing nowadays. This digital transformation can be moving from a legacy system to a new cloud native application to make it more performant, um, scalable, and save, save cost. Um, and for, for making those uh, you know, products, or as they call it, the SaaS applications, it's extremely important to be data-driven. The second reason, uh, and which is the most important thing, and as we call it, the first principle of product management discipline is identifying the right business problem. And again, for identifying the right business problem so that we can come up with the right product for it, it's important to be data-driven. It's important to collect all the insights from the customers and attack the right problem rather than building a solution or a product for the wrong problem. So in order to identify and deep dive into the problem space, it's extremely important to collect the right set of data. Third reason is prioritization of features. And this is something that a product manager does almost on a daily basis especially when they talk to their engineering teams. And in order to prioritize the features and make life easier for the engineering group, it's important to make data-driven decisions while doing the product prioritization. Um, and as a part of this presentation, I'll be talking about some of the frameworks uh, that you can deploy as a product manager uh, for doing product prioritization. The next reason, and again, this is something that uh, product managers do all the time, which is negotiations and stakeholder management. Imagine you being a new product manager in an organization and you are in a meeting with a hippo. Now hippo is highest based person's opinion. And you have to influence that person's opinion based on the user research that you have done and the customer need that you have identified. And in order to present your case, to that person or to any other stakeholder that you are engaging with, it's important to be data-driven and present the right set of data that you have collected from your research. This really helps in 
streamlining the whole project delivery process and makes a life much easier for a product manager. An important aspect of uh, product management, especially when you are doing product feature definition is uh, measuring the success of it and also running experiments against the success metrics that you have defined. You will only be able to define the right success metrics if you are data-driven and you have, you can make use of a lot of frameworks like hypothesis, which we'll be touching upon in this presentation to measure those experiments. Um, and hence, it is very important to correct, collect the right set of data for those metrics. The next reason, of course, is gaining competitive advantage. In whatever business model you are in, and in order to get uh, edge over your competitors, it's important that you collect the right set of data and uh, work on those insights rather than working on something that, uh, that, that does not have a concrete base. And hence, in order to get uh, a competitive advantage in, in the business that you are in, it's very important to be a data-driven product manager. All this really helps in successful product delivery. Uh, I'll be also touching upon some of the things and some of the tools that you can use in order to make sure that your product delivery is on track uh, and, and some of the things that you can use for measuring the health of uh, the project that you're working on. Last but not the least, all these things collectively help customer satisfaction, which is the, the ultimate goal that uh, we as product managers are striving for. So uh, let's go into the let's go into some of the techniques um, and tools uh, which can help you become a data driven product manager. So uh, for people who are new into this discipline, uh, I'll be sharing some of the things that they can do in various uh, you know life cycles of the product, right from the time they evangelize a new idea to writing that in the form of a product specification then working with your stakeholders in order to build uh, the product, and then finally the GTM motion around uh, the product. So the first and the foremost thing is collecting the right set of data. Data is being generated in huge volumes on a daily basis. And if you don't collect the right set of data, both qualitative and quantitative, you may not be able to, to get the right insights that you are looking out for. And who are here as product managers, we can do a couple of things. In order to get uh, the right set of qualitative data, we can conduct customer interviews um, out of a sample of customers. And uh, here as a part of this presentation, I'll be talking about things like thematic coding that you can do on top of uh, your customer notes in order to get the right insights that can really help you in deep diving into the problem space and then accordingly thinking about the solution for that problem. Another thing that I generally do uh, as a part of my role is voice of customer programs. This is a regular uh, meeting, which I have once or twice in a month with the people from field. Um, the, uh, these people can be from professional services who are implementing the product for our customers, or they can be the folks from pre-sales. Because these people, work directly with the customers, they can provide us a lot of insights. So preparing a template for these wise of customers and having these meetings on a regular basis can really help a product manager get the right set of data to identify the right business problem. Apart from qualitative data, collecting the quantitative data is also uh, super important. And surveys are an excellent way of doing it. For your business model, you can come up with a set of questions that you can share with your customers and get their feedback on those, on those questions. Most of the time, these questions are uh, multiple choice. Um, also, you can, you can do a net promoter uh, score for some of the new features that you're trying to build. In larger organizations like Microsoft and Amazon, you also can make use of BI tools 
in order to get the right set of data. For example, if you are working on a feature, on a new feature related to a product, um, and you want to know, uh, and, and your ultimate goal is, for example, to increase the monthly actives on that particular feature, you can use these BI tools to understand the current state of affairs for that product and accordingly define the success metrics using the BI tools. Um, I'm going to touch upon Power BI and, um, and Azure Custo, uh, which is a query language as a part of this presentation, which I generally use um, in my current role at Microsoft. After we collect uh, the right qualitative and quantitative data, and we get into the product feature definition process, it's, it's very important to make use of market reports, research papers, and product telemetry when you are defining a particular product or a product feature. This really helps in, in, in telling about those features to your engineering team. And once you have the right set of reports and research backing the uh, specification that you have written, it makes your life really easy and you are well positioned to talk to your stakeholders about the product or the product feature that you are defining. Categorizing features based on certain frameworks like Kano models can really help a product manager in the daily prioritization activities that they do and can help them in talking to their stakeholders. Um, I'll be touching upon Kano as a part of this presentation, but um, basically it allows you to categorize features on, on, basis, on the basis of various categories. Uh, you can also uh, you know, label your features as a must have, should have, or would have, which I'm sure a lot of product managers are already doing. Another way of, and this is a, a great example of being a data-driven product manager, is the revenue impact of uh, the feature that you are building. So amortizing uh, your product features um, with, uh, in, into a cost and looking into the financial and the monetization aspects can really help you in product prioritization and can also facilitate uh, the negotiations that you have with various stakeholders. Last but not the least, I'll be also touching upon how you can create hypotheses, uh, what, how you can define the right success metrics and how you can run experiments against those hypotheses and test them. Because measuring success of your product feature, defining the right metrics is super important. And again, uh, in order to do that, you need to have the right set of data. Ultimately, when you launch a particular product or a feature, um, you can measure uh, the customer adoption using various tools. Like, uh, so let's go to some of the techniques that we can use, both qualitative and quantitative techniques. Um, so the first thing that I talked about was uh, uh, the tools, right? In order to get the quantitative data. So as a, so for example, at Microsoft, we make use of Azure Custo, which is a query language that you can use in order to get the right set of data. And uh, you can think about uh, the product feature that you are defining based on the data that you have collected. Uh, you can also share these data with your stakeholders um, which can which can really help in facilitating the uh, the communications that you have with them. Surveys, as I mentioned, uh, you know this is, the, this is an example of a sample survey, but based on the business model that you are in, you can create these surveys and you can roll it out uh, to your customers, to the people from field, and get the right customer insights that you are looking out for. If you are collecting qualitative data using customer interviews, you can do thematic coding on top of it. So once you have the sample after conducting a, a number of interviews, you can actually uh, provide themes on those um, on, on, on the notes that you have collected. Basically, this can help you in deep diving into the problem space and, and identify what are the most 
pressing needs that your customers are having. Net Promoter Score is another um, thing that, that, that is very common and, and it can really help uh, product managers in understanding uh, the behaviors, the customer behaviors, and how customers are feeling about uh, their product and product features. Moving on, hypothesis. Hypothesis is a great framework that you can use, especially during uh, the product specification part of the product management process. And the standard format that we use for hypothesis is something that you see over here, which is uh, for every product feature that you are defining, you can say, uh, we believe that, and then basically the solution that you are proposing, then we will, and here you talk about the problem. And this comes from the data, the qualitative and the quantitative data that you have collected in order to get the right insights for identifying the problem. And the last part is measuring the success um, of that particular solution. And here you talk about uh, the success metrics of it. And you have to be mindful that here we are talking about outcomes and not outputs. It here, it's also important to understand what is the difference between outputs and outcomes. For example, if your feature is able to increase the monthly active users, uh, that can be like a good output metric. But ultimately, does that make your customer happy? Is it responsible for your customer churn? Or does it really help in new customer acquisition? That's the outcome of it. So your hypothesis should should cover outcomes rather than outputs, because then you will be looking into the business impact of the product feature that you are building, rather than just the output metrics uh, of that particular product. So I think hypothesis is a great framework that every data-driven product manager should use uh, for, for building the right things, making sure that their products are successful. An excellent framework that uh, product managers can use are Kano models. Now, Kano models really help us in prioritizing product features. As if you see over here in this, in this chart, you basically have, um, there, are, there, are two, there are two things that we are talking about over here. So the customer satisfaction and the degree of feature implementation. So that you can categorize your features um, as basic features, some, something that you have to build or must have features, the performance needs, like features which can help you uh, increase uh, you know, the performance of, of your product. And the last one are the excitement needs. These are those disruptive features that can really help you in getting the competitive edge. If you are able to categorize your features in these three categories, that can, then it can really help you in the product prioritization process. Um, so this is a framework that uh, data-driven product managers should definitely use. So as we see, uh, we have talked about why uh, it's important to be a data-driven product manager in today's era of digital transformation. What are the techniques that you can deploy in order to be a data-driven product manager, uh, right from collecting data through qualitative and quantitative research methods to product prioritization, creating hypotheses, um, et cetera. So yeah, so hopefully uh, this would have been useful for you. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to get in touch with me. Uh, here is my contact detail. Um, and yeah, wish you all the best uh, and hopefully uh, you can become our, our data-driven product manager. Thank you so much.